Hello and welcome to the program, Sula's Big Adventures, with me, Sula. In this episode, I'm going to be discussing how to plan a full moon, rising photo, or time lapse. Plan a full moon rising photo or time lapse. You'll need to know when the moon will be rising and where it will be rising. You can check dateandtime.com or a lunar calendar or sky safari or I use an app called The Moon to find out when the next full moon will be. Next, you need to find an interesting foreground for your full moon rising. A mountain, a bridge, a downtown skyline, an interesting building a landmark of some sort, and you'll need to position yourself about a mile away from your interesting foreground. To find a place where the moon will be rising over your interesting foreground, you can use an app such as Photographer's Ephemeris or PhotoPills. PhotoPills is a little harder to learn how to use, but fortunately there are many tutorials on YouTube explaining how to use all of the many features of photo pills. In fact, when you purchase photo pills for your phone, one of the tabs at the top is called Academy, and it contains links to numerous videos produced by Raphael Pons, creator of photo pills, explaining how to use it. Or you can try many other YouTube photo pills tutorials. One that I like is by Brenda Pirelli of Outdoor Photography School. You can download photo pills to your phone for Android or iOS for $10.99 US dollars. Or you can get Photographer's Ephemeris. I think it's free. But I'm going to use photo pills because I like the feature called augmented reality that shows you exactly where the moon will rise by holding your phone up to your interesting foreground or landscape you've selected and see the moon superimposed over it to know exactly where the moon will be rising in your photo. Be sure to remove any magnets from your phone so that it's accurate. It uses the phone's GPS to know where the moon will be rising for your location. And make sure your compass is calibrated. PhotoPills has widgets that you can add to your phone that will tell you the sunrise and sunset and moonrise and moonset every day. Although the moon is only full on one specific day, it will appear full or almost full a couple of days before and a couple of days after full moon. But keep in mind that the moon rises 20 to 50 minutes later every day. And how many minutes depends on what time of year it is. But it will rise later each day after the full moon. Also, when the moon is full, it rises right at sunset, so you get a little bit of light before it becomes dark, but thereafter, when the moon is rising later, it might already be dark when the moon rises, requiring vastly different camera settings for a bright moon against a dark sky. And conversely, if you're photographing the moon a day or two before it's full, it will still be light outside, but it'll be difficult for you to see the moon when it comes up over the horizon, especially if there are low clouds. Other items you'll need for your full moon rise photo or time lapse are a camera, a DSLR or mirrorless camera, a lens of 200 to 500 millimeters, and a sturdy tripod that won't move in the wind while holding a heavy lens on it, and a ball head. I'm going to use this 100 to 400 millimeter lens with the Sony a7 IV camera, which is a full frame camera. If you use an APS-C camera, which is a crop sensor, then your focal length will be increased by the crop factor, which is usually 1.5 times depending on what brand camera you use. So for example, on a crop sensor camera with a 400 millimeter lens, it would be in effect a 600 millimeter lens. If you don't know the difference between a full frame camera and a crop sensor camera, you can watch my video on entry level astrophotography in which I explain it in detail. If you use a full frame camera, then the focal length of your lens will be whatever focal length you choose. 
I changed my mind. I've decided to use a 200 to 600 millimeter lens with my full frame camera. And the reason is that although the moon appears large to our naked eye when it's full, that's because it's bright. It's actually only half a degree. And so the moon appears quite small at 200 millimeters, 300 millimeters. It's only when you get to 600 millimeters and higher that the moon appears large in the frame and sometimes it's even hard to get your foreground subject in the same frame with the moon. But I'm going to use 600 millimeters. And here's how the moon will appear at various focal lengths from 200 to 600 millimeters. Make sure your battery is full if you want to make a time lapse because you'll need to take hundreds of photos. Although the full moon rising only takes about 15 minutes before the moon moves out of the frame. Keep in mind that when you're going around looking for a scenic foreground, that the moon rises in the east. Next, you need to check the weather to make sure that it'll be clear when the moon rises. I can't tell you how many full moon rising photos and time lapses have been ruined by clouds, even when the weather forecast looks good. You can check weather.com, Astropharic, Zasteria, and other apps for weather forecasts. There are many. However, if you're out on the exact day the moon is full, then you might get a chance for a nice sunset, even if the moon rising shot is obliterated by clouds. Be sure to arrive at your location with plenty of time to set up your tripod and your camera and get your settings on your camera and be prepared to move if the moon is not rising exactly where you thought it would be. Today we came to Yellowstone National Park and we're at Norris Geyser Basin because there's a full moon tonight. We're going to try to get it rising over Norris Geyser Basin and hopefully we won't fall into a geyser walking back in the dark. The first place we picked was a dud. All this pretty scenery, the only thing we could see where the moon was going to rise were the treetops. So now we're running out of time. We're trying to get to Steamboat Geyser and see how it is. Clouds weren't my fault. The weather forecast said clear, but there were too many clouds to see the moon. But secondly, I should have realized if I had checked photo pills that you cannot see Steamboat Geyser from a mile away unless it's erupting. And it's a very erratic geyser that only erupts very intermittently. But we were very fortunate that there was a beautiful sunset instead. You'll need to focus on a distant object before the moon rises because there's no time to focus once it starts rising because everything happens very quickly. You should shoot in RAW and not JPEGs and you must use manual settings and I recommend manual focus as well. While waiting for the moon to rise you can focus on a distant object. Uh, the object you chose is your foreground, and lock in your focus. For your camera settings, keep in mind that as the moon rises, it will become brighter and brighter. But if you're going for a time lapse, you cannot change your settings in the middle of the time lapse. You have to just go with whatever settings you chose at the beginning. But be careful not to blow out the moon because you'll never recover it if you overexpose it. I like using one over 20 of a second for my shutter speed. 
200 ISO, and usually if you're using a long focal length lens, you're going to be limited to what your f-stop can be, something between f5.6 and f8, something like that should work with a 1 20th of a second shutter speed if you are photographing the moon rising on the day that it's full. Or you can try 1 10th of a second shutter speed with ISO 100 and something like f5.6 to f8. Be prepared with your camera already focused, and it helps to go out the day before or a few days before and practice with your settings on the waxing gibbous moon. The moon is full at least once a month and occasionally twice a month, usually in August, and that's commonly known as a blue moon. So if your photo is a failure, you can always try again the next month. But remember, the moon will be in a different position the next month or at different times of year. So you'll need to check your app to see where the moon will be rising if you plan to go back to the same location on a different month because it'll change. If you're going for a single photo, you can take a photo of your foreground before the moon rises and blend it with a second photo taken after the moon rises. But with a time lapse, that's not possible. However, it is possible to blend two sets of photos made into time lapses if you have two cameras to use. If you want to find out how to process your photos into a full moon rising time lapse, you can watch my video explaining it in detail. And I'll provide the link to that below. You may have heard the term supermoon. That just means that the moon is full when the moon is at or near perigee, or closest to the Earth in the moon's 27-day orbit around the Earth, because it's elliptical. When the moon is full at perigee, it will appear 10% larger. On September 17, 2024, there's going to be a so-called supermoon, also known as a perigee zizigy, and a partial lunar eclipse. Only 8% of the moon will be in the Earth's shadow during this particular partial eclipse, and it'll only be in the Earth's shadow when the moon is past the horizon. The moon rises at 7.13 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time on the 17th, and it won't be in the Earth's shadow until 7.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Savings Time. So no chance for getting the full moon rise, perigee, syzygy, partial lunar eclipse. <laughs> So those are my tips for planning a full moon rise photo or time lapse. Good luck if you're going out to photograph the full moon rising. I'll see you in the next one. Till then, get outside and enjoy the night sky. Dark skies forever. Sula, signing off.